Welcome, everybody. Good afternoon, race fans. We are here at Daytona. The NASCAR Burners Cup Series enters its 72nd season. Several drivers. What am I talking about? What I'm talking about is the off-season that's finally over. And all the new... There's new faces and new places and all sorts of goodies here at Daytona, USA. So before we can take the green flag to start the season and the 62nd Junior Johnson 500... Let's go through your starting lineup. Alfred Hitchcock missed four races last year, including this one. He, he was earning points at a rate that would have won him the championship had he started those four races. But he's on the pole. He didn't even have to worry about DN Huey. Also on the front row is Donald Fagan. Now Marco Polo's got subway sponsorship this season. He's not the only driver. But he's the only driver in the field. As Carl Edwards did not qualify. Okay, I saw a paint rip. He did not qualify in the Logan Cloud Motorsports 94 car. And there's a, one of the two full-time rookies in the race, but one of the eight rookies in the race. There's six, I believe, Rookie of the Year candidates, and four of them fail to qualify. This is Rick Scott driving a Toyota, one of the four, one of the three full-time Toyota teams. Raven West Motorsports, brand new team. Nobody thought much of them. The only one that did was Tim Foster's crew. And they showed the world by winning on their duel. Next up is Denzel Washington moving to the 25, replacing Hank Hill, who moves to the 38 and failed to, DN, failed to qualify. And there's Snoop Dogg. Brian Wilson replaces Stephen Hawking, and he was the other full-time rookie who managed to get the race. The legendary Beach Boys mastermind will start next to Brendan Gaughan, who merges with Logan Cloud's team and will be running full time in a Dodge as opposed to a Chevy. There's there's the bandit himself, Burt Reynolds, alongside Stephen George, who moves over to the eighty five, running the full season for Reynolds. Billy Mays after the uh after uh whatchamacallit, US Army stopped sponsoring him after this year. M&M's came back on, and he's back in the 36. There's Kathy Bates. Morgan Freeman's one here. And there's a part-time teammate, Nathan McCain. Woody Woodpecker, Telly Savalas. And then Mark Martin and Peter Perfect, who qualified 17th and 18th on pole day, start 17th and 18th. Mark Martin driving for a brand new team. Then there's... Pastor Maldonado and John Cena. Bob Ross, Tom Jones, Walter White. That much is the same. Francis Brown returns to this Buick. Probably the cause more mayhem. Iggy Koopa moves over the 42. David Dayton replaced him in the 15. Failed to qualify. There's Harrison Ford. Dinky Kaminari in the lone Alfa Romeo for Tina Cloud Motorsports. We'll line up. To the outside of Jeff Lynn. Then last yesterday's winner, Tim Foster, start next to Crow to Robot. Bela Fleck in the Toyota this year as Warwick Davis returns to Cup. Alongside Woody Harrelson, who reunites with CGI Industries. Then the six drivers who had to make who get provisionals for speed as we hear the command of fire engines. Drivers, start your engines. Hut Strickland in the 90 full time. AJ Jones, a one off. He is your defending uh, 
Truck Series champion. Then Jerry Springer back in the 17. There was Getty Lee. Al Roker, who was in the 17, now moves over to the 6 again. There's Ian Anderson, who won this race last year. Then the four points provisionals. Tom Hanks, Al Capone, Richard Simmons, Joe Biden. Joe Biden, another one who missed this race last year. He made, makes it in. <sighs> A big yawn from the yawn master himself. Next week is going to be Phoenix. That will be the Call of the Wild 500. That should be an exciting race. After that will be California and then Sonoma. The weekend after that. And then after that we end the West Coast Swing with a trip to Texas World. For those races, the top 35 and owner points will be locked in. One of those teams was part-time team, so it won't be. Speaking of part-times and stuff, the drivers who failed to qualify in order of qualifying speed, Taron Edgerton, uh, Emeril, Lagasse, Rick Mast, Chick Corea, Count Dracula, those right there are two of the full-time rookies, and Dave Marcus, Grover Cleveland, Blaze Alexander, David Dayton, the other two full two full-time two rookies. Casper the Ghost, Carl Edwards, Hank Hill, Sammy Hagar, James Bond, Tony Stark, and Peter Onjak were the dri other drivers. But the 42 who did qualify have taken the green flag. And the Junior Johnson 500 is underway. Cars will be, or at least should be, taking it easy. Nothing too drastic. Three wide a little bit in the back. Now they're going to go three wide to the front. I'm not sure why people go three wide, because... Honestly, you can't really do anything in that middle lane. Leading the first lap of the season. Not even close. Alfred Hitchcock. see eight different manufacturers are represented in today's race driving on three different with three different tire manufacturers Goodyear the choice of tire for the vast majority of this field but a brave few oh car in the wall Denzel Washington A brave few. The, both the Renaults have Pirelli rubber. Ooh. And Francis Brown is running on General Tire. I don't think anybody attempted on Hoosiers this year. <sighs> A little bit. Among the drivers... Teams that will, the uh, 94 team was on on General Tire last year. Switched to Goodyear. The 40 team, Tim Foster was the 04 and was running Hoosiers and had also switched over to Goodyear. Back with a very interesting makeup at the moment. Four laps, three laps complete now. Pastor Maldonado is your leader. Already 
a couple of drivers lagging behind. It looks like Jerry Springer might be on the verge of losing the draft. Yeah, it's very close. He's right on the edge. Cause he's over at he's like a half second behind. I'd say about half a second. If you're more than six tons back, you'd say you're out of the draft. And he is slowly losing that. Meanwhile, a little bit of uh, close quarters combat towards the front. Francis Brown led that lap. Now he's getting a little bit more of a run. He's almost a full. Second behind, we take to the roof cam of the 17. He's now losing slight ground. Go mid pack. Donald Fagan, you can see the action right here. You hear a car scrape the wall a little bit. It's now the other. Renault car takes the lead. That's the wrong button. There you can see Jerry Springer start to reel in the pack again. Maybe it's more like a minute. What I do know is if you're more than I'm not a minute, a second. Jerry Springer just ran his fastest lap of the race. You know, the single fastest lap of the race so far belongs to Bob Ross. As Bela Fleck is now your race leader. Jerry Springer slots in the line. As Richard Simmons falls right in behind. Oh, car in the wall. Snoop Dogg hits it hard. He's off pace. He's a. Sh I can almost guarantee he's going to lose the draft. Rick Scott might. Yeah. Rick Scott Snoop Dogg. He's just not going fast enough at this point. He's going to have to hope for something. Pit stops. Are we going to have pit stops this race? We might have a round of them. He's only going at eight, 187, 186. While the rest of the field's going. Well, some of these drivers are going. Yeah, 184. Snoop Dogg has fallen off the back of the pack. Four wide. Al Roker. And Ian Anderson. Gonna go at it. Nine laps have been completed. Oh! Problems in the back. One car. Sailing towards the inside. Maldonado, what are you doing? Oh, terrible crash. Oh, my God. The two Raven West cars pile into each other. Snoop Dogg's involved. They're crashing coming through the tri-oval. What on earth? 
Marco Polo smoke. Snoop Dogg is smoking. Iggy Koopa's been told towed back. Several others being towed back. Harrison Ford is upside down. What on earth? I'm at, a, I'm at a loss for words here. What it looks like, Burt Reynolds and Peter Perfect with some... Yep, they RG barged their way right up in the... Yep, figures Malinato would be involved. So we're going to look at this first. Back. Malinato manages to not wreck. As you can see, several other cars... See Marco Polo, Woody Harrelson. Oh, jeez. Marco Polo with a rollover. There's stage two. Maldonado just launches up on the track back in the Peter Perfect. That causes McCain spinning. Sally Savalas. Oh, there's a heavy hit. There's a heavy hit there. There's another heavy hit. We come back to the tri-oval where this mess has gotten underway. Ian Anderson becomes comes the meat in a Rush Fender racing sandwich. There goes Bela Fleck. It's just a mess of smoke. Nobody can see where they're going. There's Harrison Ford. He's on four wheels. There goes Ian Anderson. He's off. Serious air. Oh, boy. Look at all these cars scattered. Look at the spectator camp. Oh, God. Oh my god. What was that impact? Oh my god, it was like getting rear-ended rear by... It's like being stopped and getting rear-ended at 100 miles an hour. He did a somersault. Meanwhile, you got a few drivers at the front who managed to escape everything. Bob Ross, Al Capone, Billy Mays, Dinky Kaminari, Joe Biden. Kaminari was one of the smart people. The other drivers with minor damage, maybe, or no damage, they just to speed up the pit road. Where Joe Biden is playing strategy by staying a lot of these drivers are. These drivers, I bet you there's gonna they're gonna have to make it on fuel. So these guys are either being smart and they can make it from here, or they can't make it from here and they're being dumb. Dumb idiots, and they're gonna be stuck behind damaged cars and probably lose the draft. We're just going to skip to live coverage where we see a plethora of cars out of this race. 14, in fact. That's a third of the field out. Tom Jones, Harrison Ford, Donald Fagan, Ian Anderson, Richard Simmons, Woody Harrelson, 
Vitelli Savalas, Snoop Dogg, Marco Polo, Iggy Koopa, Peter Perfect, Nathan McCain, Pastor Maldonado, and Rick Scott all out of this race. That leaves us with 28 drivers on track. All somehow on the lead lap. We will go through those now. Joe Biden, your race leader. Then Crow T. Robot in second. AJ Jones, third. Francis Brown, fourth. Walter White, fifth. Then Woody Woodpecker, Mark Martin, Brendan Gaughan, Tim Foster, Jeff Lynn. Kathy Bates, Hot Strickland, Jerry Springer. Alfred Hitchcock, Brian Wilson, Denzel Washington, Danky Kaminari. These are the guys that pitted these last 12. Kaminari, Al Capone, Bob Ross, Billy Mays, Getty Lee, John Cena, Al Roker, Stephen George, Morgan Freeman, Tom Hanks, Burt Reynolds, and Bela Fleck. course there is your 14 that dnq'd among those richard simmons not Rich, ian anderson and telly savalas the winners of this race the last two years meaning the 28 drivers in this race all share one thing in common even mark martin they have never won this race. We are guaranteed they'll have a first time winner. We will be restarting with 36 laps to go in the great Southern American race. I don't want to call it the Great American Race, even though that is a registered trademark of the Speedway. Because it's in the same America that the greatest spectacle in, in racing is. Which is even older. So, in all reality, I think the Indy 500 could be considered the Great American Race. But if it's giving up that title to become the greatest spectacle in racing in the entire world, then yes, this is the Great American Race. What I do know is we're back green. Francis Brown making an aggressive move. None of the damaged cars look horribly horrifyingly slow. Actually, nobody in the field, well, at the moment at least. Maybe they do. Ooh. We're, we're about to see. Give it give it a lap or two. See some drivers, especially these fast drivers who pitted, like Danky Kaminari. What are you doing? Don't go don't go high. Okay, Bob Ross is going high. Maybe he maybe will dice low here. That'll probably be a good move. Yeah. No. Bob Ross made a better move. Why am I talking like Mitch Hedberg? Mitch Hedberg finished second yesterday. Tim Foster. Crow T. Robot will lead at the line. Barely. Francis Brown is hell bent on. You can see Burr Reynolds, these, little, these guys are not going to be competitive. Oh, I don't know. So what? Uh, we've got like at least 19 competitive cars. 19 to 22, I feel like, are going to compete for the race win. And of course, they're going three wide. At four wide, because we can't have nice things. Watch for there to be an accident right here. And... Watch them prove me wrong. They prove me wrong. Now, Tim Foster being scored as your race leader. Now 
that's a dangerous place that Jerry Springer was in. He was in a very dangerous place. I'd say the inside is a safe line to be on because you can at least escape the safety. The outside, you have you have cars on the inside and a wall on the outside. That's why you don't see any tennis players attempt this race, because there are walls around the track, and no matter how good you are at tennis, you will never be better than a wall. Alright, quit stealing jokes. Twenty car fighting for the race lead at the moment. Eight cars off pace. Just fighting for survival. Kathy Bates leads. Mark Martin forges ad. He's getting help from a couple of rookies at the moment. I don't know how long that will last. On board with the idiot himself. See what the rocket from the rising sun can do. Is he's gonna push the 48 to the race lead. Brian Wilson leading here at Daytona. So you can see Alfred, not nah, it's Grove. That is Alfred Hitchcock. I'm just call him Grover Cleveland. Sometimes these drivers get arrow pushed. Kaminari's leading, and I didn't even realize it. We take to the spectator cam for a hot minute. Kaminari still leads. Now it doesn't look like that's going to last any longer. Here comes Walter White. Walter White. There's this Walter White's teammate, Billy Mays. Bearer. That crash definitely depleted the ranks of Rush Fender Racing at the front. Only two of the five cars remain in this front pack. A third runs 23rd at the moment. But the other four, the other two, what do you mean the other four, have dropped out of the race. Walter White credited as leading that time. These guys have settled down and have not gone four wide. Hopefully they remain that way. You can go three wide here easily and usually you won't have problems. When you go four wide though, it gets very hairy very quickly. I want to say about 50% of the time when these drivers try throwing it four wide here, usually ends up in a yellow flag coming out. Speaking of yellow flags, one did not just come out, but we did have Alfred Hitchcock brush the wall a little bit. And that really spread out the pack. It's still a big pack, it's just a little bit more spread out. And not as uniform as it was. Kaminari trying for a power move. Just trying to get to the inside of Billy Mays. 
It did not work. Ooh, I didn't say Kathy Bates who scraped the wall. You can see the skid marks still. Oh, I'm afraid. I'm very afraid. Ah, it's what I feared the most. Lap traffic. A slow as molasses, Burt Reynolds gonna split the pack up. Oh, and he's gonna hold up the top two lines. Francis Brown easily escapes away with Joe Biden. Gone's by. Woodpack Woody Woodpecker. Tim Foster. Walter White. Bob Ross is by. Jerry Springer. Jeff Lynn. Dinky Kaminari. AJ Jones. Alfred Hitchcock. Brian Wilson, Crow T Robot, Kathy Bates. There's five cars left to get by. Here goes Mark Martin. Oh, but the other four might lose the draft. Al Capone trying to get by. He'll look like he'll get by. And really getting really hurt on this is Billy Mays. Billy Mays looking high. Now he's going to sweep down low. Hopefully he's not going to lose the draft. Hopefully these guys will merge back up. Now up the track, another slow guy, Bela Fleck. Now of your next guys on the back stretch, Morgan Freeman. These guys might come into play. Team, I'm not sure. They might. At the drive, uh, I assume at least the drivers who did not pit will have to come down pit road. There's like 16, 16 drivers staying out of the 28. So it's at least eight that were in the so-called front pack as they approach Bela Fleck. It looks like these four drivers had fallen off the back. Now... Oh my goodness, if this was a race to the line. Ba it was uh, actually actually halfway while we missed it. Brendan gone led, so he gets the halfway bonus of $100,000. That was the separation. Seven one thousandths of a second between the top three at the line. And the winner of that battle is the, wa is the one that's getting... The worst off. Look it! Did you see Tim Foster using all the ground in the world? Now these drivers have caught up. These guys definitely not going as fast. Now they're going fast. Now Kaminari back out in front. And Al the Alfa Romeo have a look good in qualifying. They've had pace. The Alfa Romeo, I should say. There's only one. Could we see some Dodge teams switch over to Alfa Romeo for next season? Full time? Possible, but unlikely. I think the most likely team to do so would have to be, I want to say, a privateer team. I think probably a team, if there was any teams only in Cup, I, I don't really see any. I don't. I can't see dry. Some teams would send over. Like, the most possible team, I think, would be Logan Cloud Motorsports. But they've got a legion of dodges in all three series. I suppose, technically, they are Ram and Truck. <sighs> Despite the fact that they're running models basically from 2003. I mean, so are these guys, but that's besides the point. 
What is the point? There's a difference about 15 miles an hour as Kaminari leads them out of turn two and Morgan Freeman enters turn three. Look at the lap cars! Not the lap, these are still the lap cars. Heck, the contingencies aren't even close to uniform. You see drivers with Nextel Cup contingencies. You'll see drivers with with Winston Cup. You see uh, at least one driver with Sprint Cup contingency and a couple drivers with Verner's Cup Series contingencies. Francis Brown has got an ARCA Remax contingency for some reason. No monster energy. Oh, no. Billy Mays being a foolishly foolish fool. Oh, okay, maybe they're not being too foolish. They were four wide, and I was scared. But then Brian Wilson and the outside line got so far back that Kaminari could slide up. And they are three wide once again. It is the oh, it's still a twenty car back. Bayla Fleck canceled out the damage from from Burt Reynolds. Now they're coming up on Morgan Freeman. Nope. He slows up the entirety of the top two lines. Heck, the third line is having trouble getting by. Oh, man. Oh, mercy. And we saw how how much problems these guys had getting there's Burt Reynolds is the next lap car you see Danky Kaminari keep kept trying to pull out a line he's gonna be stuck and drop the last because of this by last I mean 20th oh and here come pit stops Denzel Washington. That's really going to hurt some of these teams. Morgan Freeman's a slow guy and he's holding up Kaminari. Kaminari just got shafted. Contact. This is gonna at least allow Common already to catch up with some people. If he makes some aggressive moves, no, he won't make any aggressive moves. Oh, and there's Burt Reynolds. Look at that twenty car pack. Is down to like five. What are you doing, Burt Reynolds? Bob Ross has some breathing room. Probably the largest lead anybody's had all race. I think he's got a full second. He's got it. more drivers pitting. Joe Biden pulls it in. RG Bargy in pit road. Now we're going to keep posted mainly on your race. Thank you, Kevin. Already is running six throughout all the confusion. Oh, nearly two seconds of a lead. Bob Ross has got on the field. 
with 15 laps to go. Can Bob Ross get it done? He's been clicking off a crown jewel kind of every year. The Northern 500 is starting to become a crown jewel. He clicked that off in 2018. Last year, it was the Dr. Pepper 600. Can he get the biggest one of them all this year? There's Mark Martin who was in the... Kaminari is caught up to here. This is going to be the second pack. Our drivers competing for the win. If these guys can just stay single file and clear of each other, these guys could probably draft up and win to Bob Ross. Problem is, Bob Ross has, has three lapped guys that he can work with. Bob Ross's lead now extends to over four seconds. These guys just need to go faster. Oh. Hut Strickland looking slow. He might slow up this. Now there's a five car pack. Tip Foster with problems. Oh no. Billy Mays is in f These guys continue to lose ground. Walter White's being slow as molasses. Well, this pack keeps getting split up. No, oh, no. Hot Strickland's joined the pack. So it might be Bob Ross's race to lose. Maybe not. Here comes Bela Fleck. This might be... And Steven Jolt. This might be the meal ticket. They're getting a, at least four cars. In, or if somebody smacks the wall. Thirteen cars on the lead lap at the moment. That's going to change. Anywhere between 13 and 17 is what it looks like it's going to cycle through. Maybe 12 and 6. Ooh. He got held up a little bit. But it's probably not enough. But these guys are giving it the old college try. These guys only back up to 184. These guys going at what? What is he doing? These guys look competitive. Like they have competitive speed, so. That's crazy. Whoa! Problems for Alfred Hitchcock in the 43. <laughs> Something am miss, a misfire. Getty Lee looks like to be all hopes of a chill. Look at Jerry Springer, a power move. 
Tim Foster, he's finally going. So Al Roker pitted. Alfred Hitchcock. Guys, I had a thought. What if these guys can't make it? I don't think they can make it. Because they pitted around lap 11, 12-ish. And then these guys pitted around like 30. The rest of them pitted around like 34. I think they're just going to be a couple laps shy. We got a race on our hands. There's Brendan gone. He's pulling it down pit road. Seven laps to go. And only 10 drivers being sh displayed as being on the... Look at this! The second pack is starting to catch! Ever so slightly. And there's a road jam up the road. Not much of one. Coming the six laps to go. Bob Ross. His lead was up to like five seconds. It's down to under two. And he might not be good on fuel. Meanwhile, a f fight for second place at the moment could erupt into a four-car battle for the lead. Al Capone, Denki Kaminari, and Getty Lee trying to give it their all. American out in front being chased by an American, a, a Jap, and a Canadian. I think they're going to catch them. They are. They're going faster. Now, the only question remains, are they going to have enough fuel to make it to the end? Do they save enough under yellow? Bob Ross comes down pit road. So does Al Capone. Dinky Kaminari is going to take the lead. Getty Lee also pitted. Five laps to go. Oh, and they nearly spun. Kaminari just trying to find any way around. Next car on tr I think he's the only guy who has a... There's Bob. That's a half a straightaway. If he can clutch... If he can save enough... If he can save enough fuel to go 10 more miles, then he's going to win this race. And he's peeling off. The, the Alpha can't go the distance. Nobody can. Now is this going to hurt Bob Ross? Across the line to lead the lap. There's Bob Ross. He comes out of turn four. Kaminari's just getting off the pit road. I don't think he's going to be up to speed. It was 19 seconds between Kaminari crossing the line and Ross crossing the line. But there's Ross in the turn one. Kaminari hitting 150 as he comes out of turn two. Bob Ross doing 183. Oh, he might come out ahead. Kaminari might win this. It's going to be a duel. I think he's going to do it. He's got to get around B Burt Reynolds. He's really slowed up. That's going to allow Bob Ross and possibly even Al Capone in... Yes, it will. Three laps to go. Each of the past two years had seen a driver win, win this race in what was their first career start. Will it happen again this year? The last time it didn't happen was 2017 when Kurt Busch 
one. Bob Ross is definitely faster than Al Roker. Oh, he could he have the run. Two laps to go. And it's going to be a two-car battle. Bob Ross versus... Stinky Kaminari, East versus West. Ford versus Alfa Romeo. Ironically, the Kiko Man car being driven by the American sweeps down low, going into turn three. Side by side. Bob Ross nearly won the championship last year, but he's going for the one thing that's possibly even bigger. Kaminari trying to get a run on the high side. They come to the line. White flag. For Bob Ross and Dainty Kaminari. One of these two is going to be a winner. Who is it going to be? Kaminari hanging tough. Perhaps too tough on the outside. Now Bob Ross has got some separation. Coming out of the backstretch. Did Kaminari play his cards right? He's going to sweep down while going into turn three. Side by side, Al Roker somehow staying with this draft. Kaminari, he's leading, coming out of four. Does Bob Ross have anything on the high side? He doesn't. Dickie Kaminari wins the Junior Johnson 500. And his team wasn't even entered until a couple of weeks ago. Holy cow! What an electrifying finish! I didn't think a two-car finish at day for Daytona could be entertaining, but it was entertaining back in 1979, and it's entertaining here in 2020. Holy! Holy wool. Holy wool is all I can say. What a move. What a move. Perhaps the single greatest race I have ever seen. Almost made contact. There he is. Brendan Gaughan retired with a gearbox issue. Oh, there are your final results. Joe Biden wins a four-car race for third between him, Jeff Lynn, A.J. Jones, and Al Capone. Brian Wilson is the highest finishing of the two full-time rookies coming in 10th. Al Capone fades the sixth. Getty Lee is seventh. Walter White, Jerry Springer a top 10. Kaminari wins, and I don't even think he's going to be in the field next week. I believe that team is only going to be running eight races. But with that win, I would not be surprised if they make the jump to run full-time next season. Holy well. And Mark Martin apparently retires due to a tire issue. Wow, what a meal ticket. That was a race. Bob Ross, I'm pretty sure, got the most laps led bonus, so him and Dinky Kaminari are going to be tied for the points lead. There is your top 28 on the screen. Hut Strickland in 12 in his first Daytona Junior Johnson 500 in 23 years. Dale Earnhardt Sr. wasn't even a winner the last time he was in. There's the rest. There's me. 
exporting the results. Cause you gotta have your ticket. Holy whoa! I don't. I don't even think. Oh, that's gonna. Phoenix is gonna be a tough act to follow. In two weeks' time, it's gonna be California, and I think it's last year's race is any indication. That's gonna be an, an entertaining race, but don't forget, coming this Saturday as well will be Melling Series action. You'll see Tib Foster back out on track. He's probably clocked more. Yeah! He has clocked more laps than any other driver. Because he was in the clash as well. He's in a clash. He was in a duel. He was in both point races this year. <gasps> He's going to be in the... In the Melling race next year, really? The first real race that he's not going to be in is going to be freaking the cup race next week. We thank you all for joining in. Stay tuned here next weekend. We'll be at Phoenix. <laughs> Holy wall. What a finish. We'll see you guys later.